Maxwell Chicumbato has never been one to stay confined by the conventional limits of innovation. His unrelenting drive to challenge what we think is possible has manifested once again in the form of a revolutionary self-powered aircraft and engineering marvel that defies not only expectation but the very physics that govern traditional aviation. I had heard the murmurs and tall tales surrounding this machine. Many said it was a myth, a fantasy to advance for today's world. But as someone who's been a pilot for over two decades, having flown everything from fragile biplanes to massive commercial airliners, I thought I had seen the full spectrum of human flight. That was until I stood face to face with Maxwell's creation. The first thing that struck me wasn't a deafening engine roar, or the usual chemical tinge of jet fuel. It was silence and eerie, majestic silence that felt like standing beside something alive yet completely serene. The sleek body of the aircraft, with contours that seemed less designed and more sculpted by nature itself, gave off an aura of sentient capability. It looked like it didn't belong in our time, like it had been conceived in the future and gifted to us prematurely. I felt the air around it pulsing gently, humming with a silent promise of power. It was unlike anything I'd ever seen. I've seen a lot. The moment I entered the cockpit, I could feel the paradigm shift. Gone were the analog dials and fuel gauges. Instead, an array of intuitive digital readouts shimmered softly across a curved interface, reacting to my presence. My co-pilot wasn't a human, but an AI system embedded within the aircraft's core, named Aran Adaptive Real-Time Responsive Assistant that made the aircraft feel less like a machine, and more like a partner. The seat embraced my frame, like it had been designed for me specifically, responding subtly to my posture, balancing weight with an almost preternatural awareness. Maxwell's team walked me through the pre-flight briefing, and it was unlike any I had ever been through. Instead of calculating fuel-to-weight ratios or checking for hydraulic pressure, we were analyzing electromagnetic field intensities and monitoring the status of the aircraft's self-replenishing energy modules. It was aviation, but real science fiction and science fact, and yet, here it was real and ready for takeoff. The test we were about to perform was not just any f but it was a direct challenge to the limits of electric aviation. Our mission, to shatter speed barriers, previously thought unbreakable for non-combustion aircraft and prove that sustainable flight didn't have to compromise on performance. As we taxied silently to the runway, the absence of engine rumble turned heads. Spectators looked on in disbelief, trying to reconcile the motion of an aircraft with the complete lack of sound. When I engaged the main power system, a harmonic resonance coursed through the frame not a vibration, but a kind of mechanical symphony. The aircraft surged forward with torque that defied its serene appearance. It wasn't just ex- was like being drawn by an unseen force, smooth yet overwhelming. Within seconds, we were airborne, climbing faster than I'd ever experienced in any electric vehicle, and certainly without the racket or resistance typical of fossil-fueled flight at 10,000 feet. I leveled off and initiated the speed calibration. Sequence the aircraft didn't lurch or row it, simply accelerated with elegance. The sensation was not of being propelled, but of gliding forward with increasing intent. Every knot gain felt less like a push and more like a conversation between man, machine, and atmosphere. At 240 knots, I braced for the usual aerodynamic friction, but there was none. The craft sliced through the air with surgical grace. I glanced at the indicator's 284 knots and climbing, I nudged the control column and was met with instantaneous, fluid response. There was no lag, no mechanical delay, just perfect harmony. By the time we reached 310 knots, I felt a surge of adrenaline, not out of fear, but sheer astonishment. Then, as if to test us further, a sudden crosswind struck. It was the kind of turbulence that would rattle even seasoned pilots, but the aircraft barely flinched. Era adjusted trajectory in milliseconds. I watched as control surfaces reacted, independently, micro-tuning to preserve our path. It was like flying with an invisible hand correcting each wobble before it even registered. We held at 312 knots, already far surpassing initial expectations, but the aircraft wasn't done. At 328 knots, the energy systems remained unfazed. No drop in performance, no stress on structure. Even after a full 15 minutes at sustained high velocity, our energy metrics held strong. The onboard diagnostics reported integrity levels above 97%. I initiated the return loop, banking with delicate precision. The aircraft responded with a grace that felt more like an instinct than a mechanical function. There were no sharp G, no drag-induced instability. As we descended, I realized I wasn't flying the aircraft I was in communion with it. We were collaborating in flight, not piloting and piloted. Landing was surreal. As the wheels touched down, the silence was so complete it felt like the air itself was holding its breath. And then the moment shattered cheers erupted from the ground crew. Maxwell stood at the runway's edge, his grin wide, eyes gleaming with vindication. He wasn't surprised, he knew, I shook his hand, said, congratulations, he replied, no, congratulations to you, you just piloted the future, and he wasn't exaggerating, that night I couldn't sleep, the flight replayed in my head like a vivid dream, 
It wasn't just the speed, but the serenity. It felt like I had become part of the sky itself. I had flown countless aircraft, but never one that made me feel so in tune with the heavens. Reviewing the data was equally astonishing. Sustained speeds over 320 knots. Zero mechanical anomalies. No software faults. The aircraft's AI control algorithms adjusted to every environmental shift before they even became problems. The entire system operated like a living organism. The absence of engine noise became its loudest statement. Clean. Quiet. High-speed flight wasn't a fantasy it was here. The press got hold of early footage, and the internet erupted. Many called it fake, but the telemetry and th validation were irrefutable. For the first time in modern aviation, a self-powered aircraft had not just proven it could fly it, had proven it could lead dot in the following days. We debriefed and combed through terabytes of flight data. Everyone kept asking me what it felt like. I repeated myself endlessly. It felt like the aircraft was alive, and it was. Maxwell was already analyzing the test for optimization, even though most of us believed it was near perfect. But he wasn't content with perfect. He wanted proof under pressure. So he proposed the next phase, high-speed endurance under unstable atmospheric conditions. Without hesitation, I volunteered, not because I had to, but because I needed to fly it again. It wasn't just excitement, it was obsession. Maxwell's team spent days fine-tuning ERA, feeding her more environmental data, refining her predictive algorithms. They prepped the aircraft for a second test, this time focused on high-speed maneuverability and responsiveness over erratic terrain and unpredictable layers of atmosphere. On test day, I arrived before sunrise. The aircraft gleamed. In the morning light, it felt like greeting a friend. ERA welcomed me with, Welcome back, Captain Moyo. Systems nominal. There was a warmth in that voice, a familiarity that bridged man and machine. We took off, climbing rapidly to 12,000 feet. The first checkpoint required a sharp lateral bank. The aircraft executed it flawlessly before I even touched the controls. It read my intent. We entered a known turbulence corridor, where traditional aircraft would have fought with the air. This one embraced it. RS real-time adjustments neutralized every shift. Wing surfaces flexed like muscles, adapting shape. mid -fly. I would cross 300 knots again, no resistance only freedom. RA alerted me to an incoming thermal pocket. I braced, but the aircraft recalibrated and glided through like water, parting for a boat. It wasn't reaction it, was anticipation. We climbed to 16,000 feet. The earth curved below. The sky wrapped around us like a canvas we were painting on. Spiral maneuver tests followed. The aircraft performed each with flawless precision. I let go of the stick. It held the line perfectly. Ara spoke again. Ready for hyperloop simulation. I gave the go. Acceleration surged us forward, and the sky became streaks of light. We reached 345 knots. Everything held. No strain. No overheating. The system operated like a symphony. Every component in tune, we returned to base because we had to, not because we were done. Descent was surgical, touched on was gentler than a whisper. Maxwell was waiting. I told him the aircraft had gone farther than any map could measure. Engineers confirmed flawless performance. No loss of energy, no degradation. The excitement was electric, but still, Maxwell was not finished. He announced the next challenge a direct race against one of the fastest combustion aircraft in its class. Critics scoffed. Pundits called it absurd. But those people hadn't flown this aircraft. They hadn't felt its intelligence, its elegance. Three weeks later, we stood on the runway beside a roaring beast of fuel and fire. Ours hummed softly. The race began. Both aircraft surged into the sky. We matched each other through every checkpoint. At checkpoint 3, a spiral descent. I took a tighter arc. At checkpoint 4, my opponent began burning fuel faster than expected. We remained efficient. At the final U-turn, ARA redistributed wing loads in real time. I finished first by 2 seconds. Silence, then chaos. The crowd erupted. History had changed. Maxwell's aircraft, self-powered and silent, had defeated combustion in a speed race. Orders began pouring in. The FAA started discussions. But Maxwell, true to his vision, wasn't interested in profit. This isn't about sales, he said. It's about setting a new standard. And that's exactly what he's doing. With plans for vertical takeoff variants, high altitude, explorers, and intercity flyers. Maxwell isn't just building aircraft, he's building a movement and I David Moyoan proud to have been part of its first flight. This isn't just the future of aviation, it's the future of how we relate, to flight, to technology, to the sky itself. For the first time, we're not fighting gravity, we're dancing with it.